Hello, and welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave coming to you with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have the classic hymn, Take My Life by David Cullen. David. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for thy king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. He filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not all my would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose, every power that thou choose. Thank you, David. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name now and forever. Amen. Our scripture comes from Luke chapter 16. Then Jesus said to his disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. And the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill, and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he'd acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. We love a good rascal. We don't like to be tricked, but when we see someone in power humbled by a clever rogue, we chuckle, we grin. What, a, what an artful dodger. Consider the following story told by the rabbis. A man once was caught stealing, was ordered by the king to be hanged. On the way to the gallows, he said to the governor that he knew a wonderful secret, and it would be a pity to allow it to die with him, and he would like to disclose it to the king. He would put the seed of a pomegranate in the ground, and through the secret taught to him by his father, he would make it grow to bear fruit overnight. The thief was brought before the king, 
And on the morrow, the king, accompanied by the high officers of state, came to the place where the thief was waiting for them. There the thief dug a hole and said, This seed must only be put in the ground by a man who has never stolen or taken anything which did not belong to him. I, being a thief, cannot do it. So he turned to the vizier, who, frightened, said that in his younger days he had retained something that did not belong to him. The treasurer said that, dealing with such large sums, he might have entered too much or too little, and even the king owned that he had kept a necklace of his father's. The thief then said, You are almighty and powerful and want nothing, yet you cannot plant the seed, whilst I, who have stolen a little because I was starving, am to be hanged. The king, pleased with the ruse of the thief, pardoned him. The parable of the shrewd manager puzzles us if we try to perceive how Jesus could be lifting him up as a paragon of virtue. He's no role model, but he does model for us the kind of response the good news of the reign of God requires. He holds nothing back. He's all in, and we are called to do the same. No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The shrewd manager managed by objective. He recognized that he had a window of opportunity in which he could achieve his objective. He seized the moment and made the most of it. Most of us will not this week christen a ship, write a book, end a war, appoint a cabinet, dine with a queen, convert a nation, or be burned at the stake. More likely the week will present no more than a chance to Give a cup of water, write a note, visit a nursing home, vote for a county commissioner, teach a Sunday school class, share a meal, tell a child a story, go to choir practice, and feed the neighbor's cat. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. Be self-serving as cleverly as was the shrewd steward. Only take a great deal more care to understand from the perspective of God's eternity in what way you serve yourself best. That understanding is finally grasped in the paradoxical surrender of the desire to serve yourself in order that you may be liberated to serve God alone. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. Make the most of the opportunities God brings your way. Be a disciple of Jesus Christ wherever you are and whatever you do. Give God your best. Manage by objective. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that you entrust to us work to do, work that matters, work that makes a difference. And, O Lord, we may be going to a nine-to-five job. We may work independently. We may be shut in in our days of work for pay may be over. Yet, O God, there are still kind words to be spoken. There are still listening ears needed. There are still acts of compassion and generosity all around us. O oh Lord, the need in this world is great. And we give you thanks that you give us the privilege of responding to that need and making a, dis- a difference, a kingdom-making difference. So, O oh Lord, help us to not only see what we can't do, but help us to see what we can do and celebrate that it is what you would have us do. Bless us all in the work that we do, I pray. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May you be blessed. May God's goodness encourage you. May Jesus' presence give you the courage to give the gift that is yours to give. And may the Holy Spirit give you ears to hear and eyes to see the God-given opportunities you have to be a blessing. May you be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Thanks for watching.